Hey everybody, welcome to Nutri IQ Radio, where we talk about all things food, fitness, and feeling good to help you clear the confusion and get your results your way. I'm your host, Sean Hare. And I'm Jim Gale. I didn't think of a quiz. No, no. I didn't think of a profession. I forgot that that was a thing. Well, I'm disappointed. So yeah. let's skip over that. Uh, let's get into the news. Yeah. What's been going on this week? So first thing is in the past 48 hours as we record this, and basically from when you're probably listening to it as well because it releases tomorrow, we've had a fundraiser going on to raise some money for NHS charities together, which was all Jim's idea. So you want to take it away? Not, talk about that? not my idea. So okay, um, cool. yeah, basically it came about from it's, it's like a, a David Goggins challenge. Um, who's like an extreme athlete motivator guy. And um, so he's put this challenge out in that community and, and quite a few people have been picking it up. So um, a group of my friends from back home got onto it. Um, a few of them did it like a few weeks back. So me and one of my friends, or, well, one of my friends said he's going to do it and raise uh, funding for it um, and asked me if I wanted to, to join in as well. Um, so, yeah, we started that. Um, and the idea is that you run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So it's a total of 48 miles. Um, I unfortunately on the fourth run, uh, blew my knee out. So I had to stop, which was gutting, but, um, something very cool then happened because I asked people if they would run in my place. Um, and a bunch of people stepped up to the plate and did it. Um, so we had Tom first, like very last minute notice. It was about uh, 10 past seven in the morning when the next run was at eight o'clock. Um, and I just said, look, I'm, I'm not going to be able to, to go forward with this. Can anyone step forward and run? And he was straight in there. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So he went and did it. And then my next one as well, because I fell asleep then because I was knackered. So when I woke up, the next one was last minute because I woke up at like 11 and the next one was at 12. So I've messaged one of my clients who's a runner. So I, I felt pretty confident he would say, yes, he stepped up, got an incredible time. Uh, so that was Matt. Um, and then my car, my cousin Carwin did another one. Uh, one, one of the lads in the group, Fred, and my brother Joe did the midnight run. Um, one of Peter's friends who Peter was the other guy that was doing it with me. Uh, he ran with Peter at 4 a.m., which was the one that was, like, going to be hard to get someone to do, but crazy. He stepped up and did it, so that's awesome. Uh, and then Pete's sister did the 8 a.m. run as well. Uh, Kirsty and then Sean uh, did the last one for me. So that's it's sweet. been bittersweet. That's Sean. It was, you know, <laughs> um, it was really bittersweet over the last 24 hours, like, super hard to just sit here and, and like, want to be involved, but, but being benched. But on the other hand, you know, everyone's stepping forward, everyone's supporting us. The messages that have come through have been amazing. Um, and we've raised 1325 I want to say, but it might be even a little bit more now, plus gift aid. So I don't know how much altogether, but what people have put forward is, is 1325 So, yeah, incredible. Well, it's good stuff. Yeah, so... Um recording this off the back of running mine so that's why i'm in my running top still if you're watching that's why my hair is not as fresh as it normally is <laughs> it was uh, there when you started the run i know <laughs> i put it before and after on my instagram and it just looks it's just not good <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah that's cool so uh, anybody listening if you fancy helping us out and you want to donate to those funds we're trying to raise to that fundraiser I'll pop the link for it in the description for this podcast, whether you're listening as a podcast in the show notes or you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description there. So yeah, help us out. Yes. Thank, thank you, you in advance. And thank you for everyone that already has. Winner, winner. Awesome. All right, cool. So next bit of big news then is that in two weeks today, that being Monday, if you're listening later in the week, Nutri IQ will be launching going big time with the smart plan which is super exciting for us as well so we've mentioned it a few times over the past couple of weeks you've probably heard a little bit about it uh, but just in case you're not sure what it is yet we'll give you a quick little rundown 
So like we said right at the top of the podcast, we're all about helping you clear the confusion and finding how to get your results your way. So the NutriIQ Smart Plan just makes everything really simple. And basically this is how it works. You, sorry, we work out your calorie needs. You choose the meals that you want. And then we put that together into a recipe book or a guide that basically guarantees results with flexibility and freedom built in. Plus, whether you're vegan, celiac, or just don't like fish, for example, every smart plan is tailored to your personal preferences and dietary needs and lifestyle. So whatever goals you're trying to reach, whatever your lifestyle needs and choices are, it's covered. And it just makes it dead easy because it just goes... What do you need? Cool. Eat this. You're going to like it because you chose it. And that's it. Like, it doesn't need to be any more complicated. It's really cool. And so, yeah, that's going to be going live in two weeks' time. Just really exciting. And on top of that, we're excited to announce that throughout the first week of June, from the 1st to the 7th, every single day, we're going to be running a competition where you can win six months free membership on the Smart Plan yeah big cool things like six months free you know it's uh so what it was it's 5.99 a month usually uh but throughout june and july we're going to be running a three for two offer but on top of that like we said six months free crack on get on it so with that you basically go onto the landing page on our website pop your email in that's your entry entry is open from 7 a.m to 7 p.m every day And then we announce the winner at 9 p.m. And that's UK time. So if you want to enter, head on over to our newsletter, join the newsletter email list so that we can let you know every day when the entry is open so you can make sure you get your entry in and don't miss out on a chance to win. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm just sat here listening like I'm getting excited. Yeah. Yeah. Big stuff. Right. Cool. So... Unless there's anything you want to mention on that, we jump into the main segment for today. Yeah, no, they covered it all, mate. It's like I say, we've it's been such a long time coming, and just in where we are now, we're so close to launch, and we're we're beta testing as well at the moment with people, um, and the feedback is amazing. Like the more of that we get, the the more excited we get about it. Um, so yeah it's hard to just like keep it cool yeah yeah. Uh, uh, but these next two weeks are going to be big mate, definitely and i just reiterate as well get over to the page if you're not already subscribed to the email get on there because then you'll be notified every time we're running like a comp- the competition as soon as it's live um and obviously that refreshes every day as well so you will have a chance um to keep re-entering for the competition every day. Um, so you've got a decent chance of getting six months free. Yeah, so that's it. Make sure you get over to the newsletter. I'll be popping the link for that as well in the descriptions for the podcast. So you can go on and do that. It'll just take you like less than a minute. Cool. We'll get into the main segment of the show for today then, which is an interview with Dan Edwards. So Dan is a personal trainer with big time interest in the mindset and mental health side of things as well. So he focuses on helping his clients, not just to lose weight, but get stronger and also change how they're thinking and feeling about themselves, which is massive. And it's probably things that we've touched on in previous episodes. If you've been listening and something I think that's really cool uh, with Dan is that he owns a well-being company called me, myself and mine with his dad, which I think is just a really cool thing. I did not realize that. Yeah, it's with his dad. It's really cool. And so they specialize in both mental and physical health, and they provide workshops, talks, walks out in the countryside and retreats to corporate teams and communities. And they've got their own podcast as well, where they talk about everything under the umbrella of well-being. So, yeah, good stuff. Good guy. Uh, really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, so I guess we'll just get into it. Hear it. So, Dan? Welcome to the podcast. Brilliant. Thanks for having me on. You know, um, I think this is a great time to to start connecting with, you know, different people. 
and you know utilizing zoom and these online platforms that we've got to uh discuss various topics you know i think yeah thank you for having me on yeah no worries dude just for anyone that obviously doesn't know who you are that's listening trying to give us a little brief intro or a little overview of who you are what you do and okay how you got into the things you're doing now um well um my you know my main career is is a personal trainer and i'm from the west midlands um but i also own a well-being company and we specialize in mental and physical health and we deliver these you know these talks these workshops and packages to either communities providing you know information on different topics within the health and well-being spectrum or even um, corporate workshops where we go into corporate teams and um, again we provide different workshops different talks um, we provide personal training we provide meditation sessions all sorts of different things within that health continuum uh, to the workplace as it were um, but yeah and that's me <laughs> All right, cool. And that well-being company you've got is something we wanted to get into a little bit later, kind of dig into what you do in that. And I've got a couple of things to go over there. Um, but before we get into that, we were talking about uh, basically one sort of major principle that you believe is vital for success in anything. And um, we were even talking about that before we started recording. So do you want to let the listeners know what that major principle is and why it's so important? Um, you know, we said that we was going to discuss consistency. Yeah. And, you know, for me, consistency is, I'd say, the biggest part of everything in life. You know, whether that's, you know, owning your own business, developing a business, whether that's consistency in a relationship, whether, you know, that's romantic relationship, a friendship, um, you know, whether that's your own physical training mental health and mental training everything in life requires little bits of effort you know little and often yeah it's not all about you know throwing yourself in at the deep end you know expecting this this quick fix that you know our society you know in the 21st century seems to think you can get you think you can sign on to a, a one-week course and you're all of a sudden going to become a millionaire or you think you can take this pill and it's going to fix that or you think that you can do a six-week challenge and that's you set forever but in reality it's being consistent over time that's going to get the best results because otherwise you end up just dropping off you you're never really going to achieve anything because you always start something with that high motivation high expectation intenseness and then you realize very quickly that you can't keep that up. So it's about, you know, okay, you're going to have your intense days. You're going to have those days where you feel on top of the world. But you need to find that middle ground where you can be consistent over time because, you know, that's going to get the best results for, for everything in life. Yeah. And now what you've talked about there, about saying, you know, it's not about just jumping in at the deep end. It's not about having one salad and then that's you sorted out forever and um, mm. it's it's hard like being consistent it's a hard thing to do especially if it's not something you're used to doing and yeah. the way consistency and discipline uh often kind of interchangeable because like you said that initial point where you're like i'm on it i'm getting started i'm motivated i'm ready to go that goes yeah. away really quickly so those actions that we we start when we're ready to go and we're motivated how do we you know shift that into the consistency that we need or the discipline that we need i think i think there's so many different ways of looking at it i mean you know i know i noticed how you said discipline and motivation and you know motivation is going to continually go up and down throughout your life so if we're just relying on, on motivation to get us where we want to go, we're not going to really go very far because, you know, even myself, some days I get up in the morning and I feel motivated. I feel like I could take on the world. I feel like I could do this and that. Brilliant, brilliant. You're going to have the best workout. You're going to do this. You can do that. But then literally 24 hours later, you're going to wake up the next morning 
and your motivation feels like you know completely like it's spiraled down mm -hmm. and that just happens throughout life we have different stresses throughout different days we have different emotions and if we're just relying on oh i feel good i'm going to train or i feel good i'm going to get this going you know again that won't get you anywhere but it's it's creating and cultivating a discipline and, and a mindset where you realize that you're not always going to feel like it. You know, you're not always going to be able to give that hundred percent, but as long as you find the middle ground and you stay at it, you know, you can then build that consistency and over time that will get you the best results, like we said. But I feel like to get disciplined and to really, you know, switch on that mindset, I think you have to have like a big enough reason why you're doing something. Um, you need a why that resonates with you. You know, um, you can't just say, I want to be healthy because I want a six pack. If, you know, if you don't believe you're going to get that six pack or if, a six pack doesn't isn't really a big enough why you're going to get out of bed at six in the morning and go and train because as soon as that motivation comes down um then if that why that reason why you're doing something isn't big enough and it doesn't match it then you're not going to go for it so you need a, a big enough reason why that resonates with with everything you believe in with everything you want to achieve you know if it does that make sense yeah, yeah. Could you think of any examples for those bigger reasons why that maybe you've come across for yourself with taking on certain disciplines or maybe that your clients have had? You know, maybe they've started doing things and, you know, they were doing well, but they kind of fell off track. But then, you know, they found that why they found that spark. And then that is what helped them create the consistency. Can you think of any sort of examples of that? Well, I mean, you know, I've had, I've had various clients um and they all and they all come in and the and the human mind we do expect this this quick result we want it we want it now and you know we want it straight away and a lot of times people have came to me in the past and after about four, four to six weeks they've dropped off um because their why at the time was they just needed to lose a little bit of weight you know mm -hmm. um but very quickly, like we were saying, that, that why is not big enough in it and it just disappears. But then maybe six months later, those same clients will come back to me and, and they'll be like, oh, I really need to get things into order. I've been thinking that I need to start putting my health first. I've, I've had this blood test and this has shown up. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm wanting to have a baby, but I'm... Um, I'm not actually fertile enough and the doctor's saying that I need to start exercising. So do, do you know what I mean? It's those bigger reasons in life that are going to get us to do those things that we don't necessarily want to do and then be more determined and build that kind of discipline in. And then, you know, with my own life, um, I, I used to be, well, I still am. I'm quite an intense character. Um, you know, not as in I'm, I'm in your face, but with everything I do, I'm quite obsessive and, you know, with, with training. Um, but I've, I've realized that these, these addictive traits and these obsessive traits lead me to get either injured or it, it just doesn't work out for me. Um, so, you know, with my own training, I've realized that sometimes I need to come down a, beg, a peg or two um you know because that's my thing you know training i've always loved it i always will do so i don't really need that big enough reason why for training for me it's, it's just a, it is um but for me i've had to find that balance between going all out and then bringing myself back down to be consistent because if i end up letting myself go all in then i'll i'll end up getting injured so for me sometimes it's about bringing those reins back mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and you know and with business with uh, the me myself and mine stuff I only started it about a year and a half ago but 
you know, I'm quite optimistic and I thought that I'd be doing retreats in the Bahamas by now when I first started. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, you quickly realize that these things don't happen overnight. You don't, you don't build a business. You're not going into so many different corporate teams just at the, the click of your fingers. Yeah. It, again, it takes that consistent effort and you know the big enough you know i've created a reason why and what i want to develop and to reach out and connect with so many different people when i'm having a down day and i don't feel like i'm good enough i think about my reasons why i'm doing this business you know i think about why i started i think about you know what effect you could have on a massive amount of people that that sort of thing so i, I then look at my reasons if if that makes sense yeah, from listening to what you're saying there, it sounds like there's sort of two key factors to helping to find that consistency mm-hmm. and taking those actions consistently. Obviously, the first one we've set out, right, is having that bigger why, that bigger goal, that reason that you can come back to when things are feeling a bit harder, when the motivation's lower, that are going to help you get out of bed, get in the kitchen, get in the gym, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing, is probably managing the expectations. So like you said, those clients might come to you and think, I want it right now. I want it in a week's time. I'll do whatever it takes in a week and then we'll be there, yeah? But obviously a week later, that's not the case. Like you said for yourself, a year and a half later, you're not in the Bahamas running retreats yet. And so in your own head, you've obviously had to sort of manage that expectation to say, right, I'm going to have to slow things down, understand mm-hmm. that's going to take a little bit longer. And, yeah. you know, if you hadn't done that, it may well have been the case that if you'd have just still believed, oh, I should be in the Bahamas by now, forget it. What's the point? You know, you can yeah. easily sort of go that way with it. Yeah. In terms of that managing expectation side, do you have any kind of sort of approaches you would use with people to help them manage what their expectations are and what can be achieved in the time frame they've sort of given themselves. Definitely, mate. Um, you know, once we've got that that big reason why, you know, that reason that gets us out of bed in the morning, it's getting us to do the things we don't always want to do. And we've got that bigger goal. So that reason why, you know, like we said, that could be I want to have a baby or, you know, um, I need to be in this shape because my cholesterol is so high or this that and the other so that's that long term you know that goal that that's the bigger goal so then once we once we've got that goal and we can see what we want and we can you know we've we've visualized it we know that we can we can get there yeah sometimes that looks a little bit daunting Mm -hmm. you know if it's something that that is too big so or say if somebody says i want to create this business well, then all of a sudden you've, you've said it, but then you're like, well, actually, at how am I going to do that? Yeah. You know, it seems really out of reach. You know, for me to say, I want to go and host retreats in the Bahamas right now, how am I going to do that? You know, so you need to almost take the steps back. Once you've got the big goal, the big reason, um, you need to sort of, break the big goal down into smaller achievable chunks Mm -hmm. um whether that's setting a goal at six months setting a goal at three months at one month working your way backwards and then one thing that i generally do and i ask my clients to do is the night before they get up in the morning the night before so before they go to bed of an evening they will write themselves sort of two or three tasks for the day things that they want to complete or, or, you know, that they're going to do that will lead up to that bigger goal. If, if you understand what I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, if we can at the end of each day, look back on what we've achieved that day and you're like, Oh, well, I did that. I did that. I did that. That puts you in a positive mind frame. You know, you might not have generally uh, genuinely wanted to do it, but if you look at it and go, well, you know what? I got that done today. I got that done today that's healthy. I did that today. What am I going to do tomorrow? And then over those days, those weeks that adds up to that month goal over that month that adds up to the six months. Do you know what I mean? So then you're just, 
continually staying consistent staying on it and you're working towards that big goal yeah uh, and that's how i'd do it and that's how i uh, i ask my clients to do that yeah and that tomorrow's tasks exercise you know if you want to call it that that probably in itself helps you to create that consistency because sometimes we don't have to do things every day you know if it's going to the gym you might do that three or four times a week and mm-hmm. so you know if you're writing down what you're going to do the next day and then all you have to do is take off that thing it does kind of stop you being so daunted about the week you know if it's a sunday you've had a mad weekend with the kids yeah off school doing your editing or whatever and then you're thinking oh i've got four days i've got to train this week you know if you're not mm-hmm. into training if you don't love it yet and yeah. that can kind of make you not want to do it at all but mm-hmm. all you've got to do is say right it's monday tomorrow i've got to go to yeah. the gym just one time yeah that one time feels easier than the whole four times because you're tired right now yeah yeah you, you know, know so yeah, you're, like that. You're, looking at that. you're not looking at the whole week you know it might not even be that tomorrow's task is the gym yeah but but what task are you going to do that adds up to that gym or that that goal do you know what i mean it could just be that you're going to eat five different kinds of vegetables that day Mm -hmm. if if you understand what i mean um it could be that you know tonight i'm going to make sure that i get eight hours sleep you know so i'm going to prioritize getting to bed early so that's that task of the day you know do you know what i mean it's just making those healthy consistent choices and continually putting them down so that you can see when you look back on it at the end of a week oh shit this is i've done all this do you know what i mean and then that's what keeps your spirits lifted and that's what then keeps you disciplined when that motivation does drop off because motivation will and always does drop at some point you know You, you you've got You've got highs and lows of life. You've got highs and lows of everything. So learning how to ride it and learning the, the, the ways to keep yourself on track, even when you are, you know, down there, that, that's how you're going you're gonna to achieve things in life. Yeah. Just quickly back to the, the big why, the big reason, the big goal, whatever you want to call it. You know, we mentioned sometimes people will come back to you or it might be the first time they've come to you and they say, I want to have a baby and I've found out, you know, I need to lose some weight to be able to do that or I need to improve my health if I'm going to be able to do that. It might be that, you know, a family member has had a heart attack and that's given you a wake-up call, that kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, that then helps you to have that why and to find that purpose and to then do all those other things we talked about, like think about that when things are harder. But if somebody hasn't had that kind of big news, that wake up call, they're just somebody Mm -hmm. who, you know, they kind of know they want to be healthier. They kind of know they want to lose a bit of weight, but they don't have that bigger purpose yet. You know, Mm -hmm. how could somebody find that? You know, do you have any kind of little exercises you could do with those people to help them dig a bit deeper and to find that bigger reason? Um, That is a very hard question that is that is that is a very hard question but you know i was talking with one of my friends on the phone earlier about this um i said was there a specific point that you looked at yourself you know in the mirror you looked at yourself in your eyes or you know when you you know because we all talk to ourselves in our own heads Mm -hmm. and you actually said to yourself you know what enough's enough you know you asked yourself that question are you happy continuous like continuously doing this you know like are you asking yourself you know am i going to continue giving myself these excuses because nobody else in life can actually change things for us people can resonate with us and help and guide us along the way but ultimately it's our choice and i think you have to get to a point where you ask yourself some serious questions mm-hmm. You know, am I where I want to be? Am I who I want to be? You know, um, can I continue this way and be the person I want to be, acting the way that I am or with the habits 
that I have right now. So I think there's got to be that that point where you you either something externally happens and it makes you switch on, yeah. or you've got to sit yourself down and have a serious think, a ser- like a, a brainstorming session, whether that's just asking yourself stuff, looking at yourself in the mirror, or writing things down, you know, write what you want to achieve and put next to it why you're not already achieving it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So then you can actually visually see all those obstacles or all those behaviours that you're participating in that could be holding you back. And then that's when you've got that starting point. Does that make make sense to you? Yeah. And what you said there about why am I not there already? Why am I not doing those things? Sometimes you might look at that question and you'd say, why am I not as slim as I want to be yet? And Mm -hmm. the answer to that question that your brain comes up with might be, well, because we eat a bit too much cake. And then you can look at that two ways. You can say, all right, well, maybe I should not eat so much cake. But then also you've got another question of, well, why am I eating that much cake? And it could be as simple as, I just really like cake. It's it's quite nice. And then it becomes a different situation then of weighing up, well, do I want to enjoy this much cake or do I want to feel the way I want to feel? And the reason I've said I wanted to, be a bit slimmer in the first place do i want to get away from these feelings that i'm feeling right now and absolutely you know make that decision between those things but then don't get me wrong there are these negative pro there are the not even just negative there are these programs that are running in our subconscious mind continually and we might still be running a program from when we were five years old you know, um, a parent or somebody could have told us that we should look this way or, or we shouldn't eat that or we should eat that or we've just watched our parents eat a certain way and then we've continually played that program and formed those habits over time. Yeah. So, you know, for some people, it is going to be harder than others. And you know, food is a delicate subject if, if we're just talking about food. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we did a podcast uh, last week um, with a, a nutritional therapist and she was talking about how people use food as control, uh, control mechanisms and, you know, trauma has happened within their life and they might go to food to release that, you know, that dopamine, serotonin, that feel good so if you know that you use food incorrectly, you know, you use food like that, then I think that's an even deeper route and, and you need to not just ask yourself the questions and where you want to be. Maybe if that was you, you'd need to go and see a, um, somebody that was specialized in that area. You would need to go and seek help of a therapist or, um, you know, a behavioral therapist, a a food therapist because sometimes it isn't just as simple as looking at ourselves in the mirror and asking ourselves those questions because if there are those serious traumas from childhood or issues then we we may need another perspective to to come in and and that's where you would get a coach or a therapist somebody to assist you and you know guide you do you know what i mean as long as you're willing to do the work, you know, you've got to be willing because like I said, nobody can do it for us. Mm-hmm. But if there are those deeper issues, then obviously you need to, to go and get professional help. Yeah. And where we're talking there about, you know, how food can be, can have such a mental relationship that we don't realize. I mm-hmm. That's probably a good point to kind of shift over to the other things we were looking at talking about which is the other company you mentioned before in terms of the mental well-being and all of that which is your me myself and mine company yeah yeah so obviously you said you're a personal trainer and you know a lot of people might think a personal trainer just gets you in the gym beats you in the gym uh, or they might think oh well he's probably going to help me with my food as well but then how did you end up getting into that 
more mental side of things. Obviously, we've been talking about the mental side this whole time, but yeah. how did that become more apparent to you? And then how did that become me, myself, and mine? Um, well, about four years ago, well, not even just four years ago, when I started university, I, um, I really started to suffer with my mental health. Um, and for the whole time at university, I was, I was having these thoughts, these images and these horrible, anxious thoughts cropping up into my mind. And I was feeling anxious, shameful, guilty all day, every day until it got to a turning point when I realized, you know, I, I can't cope with this anymore. And, um, I, I realized cause I heard somewhere on the radio that what I was experiencing was a, a form of OCD called pure O and, um, it's a intrusive thoughts, thoughts around taboo subjects that we, that we associate with, that we don't like, um, start to crop up in our mind. And, you know, the more we then focus on them, the more they then continue to crop up in the mind and the more anxious you feel. So, you know, I was in a really dark place for around three or four years. Um, and once I, you know, realized shit, I can, I can, I can go and get help. That then set me off on a different path because whilst I was at uni, I was so focused on strength training, athlete training, you know, heavy lifting, you know, I was using my training, if anything, to escape those thoughts and to escape my own reality. Um, but when, you know, when I finally came to it and, and, and said that I, I need help, uh, I need to go and see someone that, you know, that extra guidance, that support, learning about mindfulness, learning about meditation, then just opened up a whole different path for me. And, and that's how my journey started really, um, through my own struggles with mental health. Yeah. Okay. So like we said before, kind of, for uh, those clients coming back, you had that wake up call for yourself in terms of, of mental health then. And so what does me, myself and mine do? I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know, doing kind of workshops and things like that. Uh, I was just having mm-hmm. a look on your Instagram before and I seen you've gone out and done some hikes and things like that. Yeah. So what, what is that for? The hikes? The hikes, obviously exercise for one. And we know, you know, like you, like you said earlier, people might just say, oh, you're a personal trainer or you're just into fitness. How's that going to help with my mental health? Well, I'd say that exercise is probably the quickest way to change your mood. Mm-hmm. Just like that, you know, we don't, we don't always want to go on a run. We don't like it when we're doing it. But as soon as you've finished, you've got that endorphin rush. You've got dopamine and serotonin flooding around the body, the endocannabinoids, and you feel great. You know, you want to connect with people. You feel connected to yourself. And that's what that part of me, myself, and mine is. You're taking people out into nature, um, which a lot of people that, you know, work in offices, a lot of people... In, in a city or, or whatever don't normally see nature so we are taking people on hikes up Snowdon up Cader Idris and, and mountains or even just on a, a forest walk to get them out in nature but not only that you've got the exercise component but when they turn up they often turn up with either one person they know or they might not know anybody mm-hmm. so they're then connecting with new people and you know we're human beings connectedness and communication is a massive part of our of of us of just being and um so people turn up they feel unconfident and then all of a sudden within a few minutes they realize that they're no different to other people and they start chatting they start connecting and the conversations just start flowing and pairing exercise you know with meeting new people is a great way to get connected because when you're walking and talking the conversation just starts flowing and i feel like the walks in particular are massively important for mental health because you might start talking to somebody and within 10 minutes you're in the best conversation relatable conversation 
that you would have never have had if you were sat at home because when you start walking you get that good feel that connectedness you you start feeling buzzing within yourself and then all of a sudden all those those thoughts or what you've been wanting to say just start flooding out and you realize that oh shit they've been feeling the same and we can talk about this and talk through it mm -hmm. oh so, so yeah and then obviously once you've done a mountain you've got that sense of accomplishment and there's that feeling of you know this is what i've done today so so that tops it off yeah yeah i think it's a it's an awesome thing to do i used to do the same uh, with my clients when i was doing pt we go out on walks and like i say it's just getting to know new people and being out in the sun and fresh air just makes so many things feel so much nicer and I wonder if, you know, that's something people might start to do a lot more of as we start to come out of this whole lockdown situation we're in. Because obviously with everything that's going on right now, we're kind of seeing a lot of things that we took for granted before. Yeah. Things as simple as being outside. And, mm -hmm. you know, like being outside in the city for one. But then I feel like a lot of people are going to want to go that bit further outside yeah. and go on those kind of hikes and make the most of it and take the kids and all yeah. this kind of stuff you know you don't appreciate what you've got until it's gone yeah you know and and naturally you know when you tell somebody you can't do something or you know i'm gonna take this away from you you know like when you're a kid and you got grounded mm -hmm. what one thing you wanted to do was to go outside and, and play yeah, with yeah. your friends and it's almost like we've all been grounded you know, our, our freedom has been minimized and it has been taken away. So although that is a pretty negative thing and it is pretty shit, like, you know, there's no beating around it. It is pretty shit. But I think when we come back into normality, people are going to be, people are going to be like, you know, really wanting to connect again. Yeah, people massively. are wanting to go out, to be wanting to go out into nature go and meet up with their friends and do the things that they haven't been able to do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think we're going to see a surge in outdoor activity. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if, you know, coming out of the other side of this, there'll be kind of a big boost in the mental health of, of the population because we suddenly yeah. understand how important it is to connect because we've understood how much we miss it now that it's been taken away rather than it's just not doing it. You know what I mean? Def oh, definitely. Um, I think at first you're probably going to see, you know, when people are returning to work and obviously even now, I think there's going to be that decline in mental health, yeah, no, um, yeah. you know, especially in this period right now. And then as we go towards obviously coming out of lockdown, that might also still be on a bit of a decline. But then I think after a few weeks of getting back to normality, people, you know, once you start, exercise and again seeing people that will then start to climb yeah so i definitely think it's 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 going to be great when, when we can get out but you've also got to count your blessings that we are in the 21st century and imagine this happened and we didn't have the iphone we didn't have instagram yeah. you know we didn't have facetime how would you connect with your friends or your family mm -hmm. so you've almost got to feel grateful for the technology right now when we can't actually physically be in the presence of our, our friends and family. Yeah. And to, to just bring things back around full circle, now that we've kind of gotten onto that point of lockdown before we started recording in terms of the consistency side of things, you know, we were saying finding that consistency that you might not have before is a bit more difficult, but I feel like that tomorrow's tasks kind of thing, you know, could be something that could really help people to find some level of consistency, even if it's just those tasks, you know, like we were saying yeah. before. Um, but what kind of things have you been doing, you know, maybe with yourself or with your clients to help them keep that level of consistency in the situation? Well, that's similar thing, really. Um, obviously, I've been messaging some of my clients, you know, I've spoke to them and you know, some of them have been struggling, you know, they've, they've been struggling because the routine of their normality has been taken away. Yeah. So, you know, when we haven't got a struggle, we're human beings, you know, it's good to be 
um, what's the word? Not have too much structure. Do you know what I mean? It's good to be uh, a bit flexible sometimes. Yeah, flexible and yeah, yeah. you know, but we do like that structure because without it, it's very uncertain times, mm-hmm. and we've almost been cut off, and we have to create our own structure now. So you know, just talking with my clients about creating their own structure and to keep on with those little tasks of the day. You know, it might not be the normal task that they were working towards before. You know, they, they might not be going to several meetings a day because they want to progress their business. Okay, but what one little task could you do that still lets people know you, that you're there and you're working on it? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That one little task. And then the other task could be, you know, cleaning the house. The other task could be make sure you've meditated today. You know, the other task could be eating healthy. So it doesn't all have to be business or or whatever related. They could all be different tasks in different areas of your life. But just making your your own routine, making a new routine, if you you understand, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just make a new routine with the sort of new circumstances that have been pushed on us. You can still, even though we've been sort of, I said this to somebody yesterday, he said even though the sort of rules of the game have been changed, you still get to choose how you play the game. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Just uh, looking at time, being conscious of that, yeah, I think it will probably be a good idea to start wrapping up. But just before we go, we like to, on the podcast, obviously we talk about all these different things in terms of general information and advice and these principles and ideas and things we've been talking about, but I like to give people something that they can go away and work on or think about, you know, for the next week until we get the next podcast out. So could you think of one piece of advice that you think would be good for people to go away with and either work on or think about for the rest of their week? Mm -hmm. I think two, two things. And it's those two things we've been talking about. One of them is ask yourself, the question, you know, why and what is it that you, you want to start developing, you know, and why is that so important to you, mm-hmm. you know, because we, we've all got things that we want to do, even in this time period, even in this period of being in lockdown. So I think regularly checking in on yourself and asking yourself why and, and just keep questioning if you, if you know what I mean. And then, Number two would definitely be that that daily um, daily tasks, just getting something down, and it's just seeing that tick at the end of the day just puts yourself in that positive mind frame yeah. for sure. And and if I could be if I could be cheeky and say three, uh, one thing that I've been doing the last two weeks is keeping a gratitude journal. Yeah, I uh, love that because we made one for our for our business. Um, which I'm happy to send you guys or for anybody that's listening to this podcast, if you send me your email, I'll send you out a free gratitude journal. But again, when we note down those little three things a day that we were happy to do that came into our lives or that we're just generally grateful to have, it, it just changes the perspective of the whole situation. Yeah. So, so I'll send you over a gratitude journal at the end of this. And if anybody listening wants one, then uh, if you send me your email to me, myself, mind at hotmail, at hotmail me, myself, mind at outlook.com, then, uh, then I'll send you out one as well. Yeah, yeah. And we'll put your email down in the, in the show notes and in the description for anyone who wants mm-hmm. to drop you an email to get that from you. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, cool. Well, thanks very much, Dan, for taking a bit of time out with us today. And that was an awesome show. We've got loads of cool stuff in there. Uh, yeah, so thanks for being on the show. Thanks for inviting me. I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, if you could think of another subject, then I'd be happy to come on again at some point, definitely. Good chat. What do nice. you think, Jim? Yeah, I, I really like that. I, I, I like Dan. Um, I think he's a super nice guy, and his accent um, makes him sound even nicer. Like, <laughs> that Midland accent's great. Um so there's a few bits in there that I really liked and that stood out to me when I was listening. Um, first one, and uh, before you had the interview as well, I had this sort of conversation with Dan, 
um, about this point where um, we talked about be people being all or nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, like what I came to realize quite quickly in the industry, and we touched a little bit on it in last week's podcast as well, is that people maybe don't fully understand themselves and how they operate. And I find that a lot of people think that they're all or nothing people, um, not realizing that actually they burn out pretty quickly, um, in, regardless of the fact that they've done it multiple times, maybe still can't, still haven't realized that that's not the approach that that's going to work for them. Some people are all or nothing. I get it. Like um, some people just go hell for leather, get the job done, hit the results that they want, um, and then do whatever they want for the rest of their life um but yeah i think this whole this whole sort of concept of being an all or nothing person is for less people than people that think that it is for them i don't know if it makes sense um do you know what i mean yeah well i don't know because like being an all or nothing person i don't think generally is understood to be a good thing because yeah. it is that kind of like you're either fully on it or you're not on it at all. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not sort of like a, I'm all in and that's it, job done. It's like for most people when they say, yeah, I'm I'm really like an all or nothing person, they seem to think of it as themselves when they're on the all in part, they're really motivated, but they know that they quickly become unmotivated. And so, yeah. you know, it's well, just managing see, this is that. the thing that, yeah, I... The thing that I found is that from people that I've coached in the past, they sort of recognize that. Um, but at the same time, that then they, they're trying to use it as a strategy. Yeah, I know. So you they'll mean. be like, look, I'm, I'm only ever like 100% or nothing. Like, I, I can't do um, a few training days a week. Um, I, I just, I've got to always just go for six. Um, but then I always give up because it's too hard. Um, so, how do I? utilize like they're trying to find a way to utilize that approach that works for them as opposed to just being like well we need to just step back and find some balance you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. um the other thing as well is that you spoke uh, dan spoke about um sort of breaking it down into what the issues are for people with consistency um and how to break a goal down into what the actual approach is um and then what the actual result is and then and the motivation being two separate things mm -hmm. um so i thought i would just share sort of my approach on that that i've had in the past where we would break a goal down into three different parts the first being the objective which was the sort of the action so it would be how many times are you going to train how, how many calories are you going to eat? Uh, what kind of diet are you going to follow? Those things, like what you're actually going to do. And then the second part would be the results. So what is the physical outcome of that? You lose weight, you get six pack, you get stronger, you get you gain muscle, whatever. Um, and then the last part was the outcome. So it was what it actually meant to them. So you and Dan talked a lot about the why. Um, so the outcome is kind of more of the why. Because, like you said, wanting to look good on the beach um, is obviously a motivator, but it's quite short term and it's fleeting. Um, whereas, you know, wanting to feel more confident or wanting to be able to play with your kids or grandkids in the park and keep up with them without getting knackered, stuff like that is more of an outcome and it's more motivating at the end of the day so yeah. i think it's just it's good to mix those elements um like again like you said and like dan said in the interview you've got to realize that some things are quite good for short-term motivation and other things are good for instilling the the why principles to keep you going over time and to keep coming back to when it really gets challenging uh, so yeah yeah, oh, that was cool. Yeah, it's cool. One of my favorite things, uh, well, it's sort of two things that I do 
for myself as one thing that Dan mentioned, which ties in nicely with the fact that this week is Mental Health Awareness Week, is the Tomorrow's Tasks kind of tool, if you like, or action. So just taking some time each day to say, right, cool, what am I going to do tomorrow? Uh, What do I need to check off to kind of feel like tomorrow has been a successful day, if you like, Mm. because we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves to get things done. And, you know, right now, you know, with it being locked down, you might not be getting as much done as you were before because you've got new things to have to do. You know, if you're in the house all the time, you probably need to clean the house a bit more, things like that. So, you know, if you normally had a to-do list for work and, you know, you're used to checking things off, maybe just do that for the house. And, you know, it could be, say, like three things for the day. And one of them is Hoover. So if I can, if I can just Hoover tomorrow... I've nailed the day, you know, just, you know, just let things be simpler, let things be easier. You know, every day doesn't have to be a grand day of achievement. It can just be doing the little things to get through the day, you know, and the other thing with that is the gratitude diary as well. Something that he mentioned just at the end, uh, but that's something that I do every day, every morning. So I do both of those things in the morning. I wake up, get out of bed and then write that. I write three things I'm grateful for that day. And again, it doesn't have to be big, grand things. It's just, you know, sometimes I'll be sitting there and I can hear birds outside. And I'll say, you know what? Grateful for those birds. They sound nice. Um, Sometimes it will be, I'm grateful that I had a nice sleep. You know, just simple things, but to help you recognize things are good. And then I say, what have I got to do today? These couple of things, that would be a good day. And then in the evening, I just come back to it and say, right, what did go well today and then I can check those things off I can say other things that have happened that have been good and it does make you feel a lot better in a lot of ways a lot more settled just taking five minutes in the morning five minutes in the evening to reflect on things like that really does help with mental health and it sounds too simple but every counsellor you could ever go to would recommend that so there's a reason yeah, that they definitely. would do that I think it's a, it's such a powerful message, especially now, obviously with the, the current situation of COVID and what have you. Um, like you said there, actually, it sort of seems too simple. That's kind of, I think, probably the problem that a lot of people have is it's just like, oh, yeah, as if that's going to help. Um, but yeah, it is so helpful. And like you say, so many people do recommend doing it. Um, I think as well, on the point of it being Mental Health Awareness Week, um, I think companies and organizations like me, myself and mine are so important and probably a little bit underrated um, for uh, corporate companies that um, going into organizations, going into businesses and speaking to the teams um, because, because work and stress um, is always in the conversation usually mm-hmm. when you're talking about um, you know, mental health. And so I think things like that are, are really, really important. So it's cool what Dan and his dad are doing. It. Like I said, I didn't realize yeah, yeah. his dad is working with this. It. Awesome. Yeah. So like I said, that gratitude diary that Dan mentioned at the end, if you want to download it so you can try it out for yourself, even if you just use it as a guide and then get yourself a notebook that you use, uh, you can download that from... Uh, sending Dan an email so I'll pop his email in the show notes drop him an email tell him you want it and he'll send it out to you Uh, start looking after your own mental health during mental health awareness week see how you get on with it so let's get on to the letters for this week then so any questions we've had coming up and things like that if you've got any questions about anything at all things you're wondering about nutrition health feeling good let us know what they are. Drop me an email to sean at nutri-iq.net and we'll read it. We'll probably, well, we will get back to you straight away, but then we might use it on the podcast if it's a really cool one to dig into as well, uh, like the ones we got this week. So, do you want to kick off? Uh, well, to be honest, the all the ones that, well, the ones that I wanted to talk about is um, with the challenge 
that since we started posting it out on the Instagram and, and raising awareness, um, obviously there's a lot of love coming through from friends and family, but also through the Nutri IQ page and um, from our own community, there's a lot of support there. So uh, I'd like to just say thank you for that. It was brilliant. And obviously, again, for anyone who donated, but the message is the support, the love um, was very much felt. So that's that's my highlight. Cool, cool. Yeah, and same again. Like with that, if you've got anything you want to let us know, just to let us know what you think of the podcast, what you think of any of our content or whatever, do it. Because if we know that you like things, it means we'll probably do more of those things. So, yeah, let us know with that. And again, thanks for everyone's support on the fundraiser. So I've just got one question that I sort of picked out from this week, which uh, I've actually already made a post about, uh, which has been on Instagram this week. Uh, it was just somebody on a, on a, in a Facebook comment saying that they were only one and a half pounds down for the week and they were feeling really disappointed. And so on that, I know a lot of people feel that way. You know, a lot of people go to their sort of weekly weigh-in meetings and stuff like that, or they just do a weekly weigh-in for themselves. And, you know, you see a lot of posts about having only lost a pound this week. Oh, I'm so frustrated. I'm so disappointed. I wish it was more. And for me, I always comment on these and say what I'm about to say, because for me, the issue with feeling that way is just an issue with perspective and patience on what's actually happening. So just to put it into perspective, if you lost one and a half pounds every week for a whole year, that would be 78 pounds in a year which straight away obviously sounds like a lot more. And I think that's part of the issue in terms of the perspective. When it's a pound and a half, that doesn't sound like a lot. And if you were to think of it another way, it's 0 0.1 of a stone, which again, doesn't sound like a lot. But when you sort of let yourself think about where you're going and you know, you're know you going to aim at least to be consistent with this thing, if you were to do that consistently, you'd lose 78 pounds in a whole year which is five stone and eight pounds, which is loads. That's ridiculous. You know, like most people who are, who are leaving these comments, they've maybe got two or three stone that they want to lose, maybe four, maybe five. You know, you don't know who it is or what it is that they've got to lose. But, you know, if you're listening and you are trying to lose anywhere near that or below that and you're disappointed with losing a pound and a half, don't be because that's actually really fast because you know a year in itself isn't that long in the grand scheme of things you know when I was thinking about this question I was thinking to myself you know how often does it get to say November and people start talking about Christmas and you stop and you go whoa is it is it nearly Christmas already I feel like we just had it because the year just flies and that's it you know like time does fly and when you're trying to do this thing while you're going through this process, it can feel slow in the moment as you're going through it. But if every Christmas seems to come around really fast, a year will come around really fast from when you started doing this. And you could be five stone, eight pounds down, which is crazy. And even if it was only one pound a week, just one pound, that would be three stone 10, which yeah. is still loads, know. you know? Yeah. So that's it. I just wanted to let people know, you know, if you're seeing those kinds of numbers on the scale, a pound a week is actually pretty fast, even though it can feel slow. And so if you find yourself feeling disappointed, just think a bit longer term. Think about what would happen in a year's time if that was what happened every week. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, it's perspective and patience because a year isn't that long and a pound is actually quite a lot yeah it is i think even even if it's less like it, it's always good when you're going through a process like this like with this specific example of someone who's trying to lose weight it's always good to try not to be too emotionally reactive to mm -hmm. each measurement yeah so if you go three months and 
it's not working, then obviously you can look at it and be like, well, something isn't right, so something needs to change. And again, it, it should be rational. Uh, rational. But some people, like you'll know, Sean, from experience, some people will freak out if they've been hitting two pound a week for a few weeks consecutively, and then they get a 0.5 pound loss in a week. You can't react to that because again, your weight loss is going to be averaged over time. The, the drop in weight is never consistent. It's always a sort of wiggly little line. Um, so yeah, A, perspective, like Sean said, and B, don't be too reactive. Like, play the long game a little bit and make rational uh, reactions based on what you're seeing over a longer period. So that's why, like, in the SMART plan, we encourage um, a recipe refresh every two weeks um, because you can get a better read on on your progress over that time. Whereas in a week, like we've talked about weight and weighing ourselves before, in a week it, it can just be, like, completely mental if it's going up or down and um, yeah don't be too reactive be patient and perspective like sean said it's a lot of weight over time even if it's just a pound a week yeah definitely is so we move on to what we're reading then cool yeah so it's my turn to be serious yep okay so um i haven't got it to hand it's downstairs um but my Favourite book of all time, favourite non-fiction book of all time, um, is a book called uh, David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, he's got like quite a lot of well-known books, um, like Outliers, I think is probably his biggest one. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually read it. Um, but David and Goliath is, uh, it's about using your quote unquote disadvantages um to be become your advantages um and it's it's just full of real life stories and real life examples of people who have done that um can't actually think of any examples but the guy who who, who um created ikea i think is one of them and there's like a lawyer who's dyslexic um, and somehow he's he used his, his dyslexia to his advantage. Um, so it's about that. It's about it, instead of looking at things as disadvantages, you look at them as things that set you apart um, because it's those challenges that make you do things that the people who don't face the same challenges wouldn't do. Um, so they wouldn't see the same sort of progress in, in that regard because they just don't have to go through that fight. Um, so it's just it's full of a bunch of examples like that. It's just about, you know, using the things that make you an underdog to become the, the best at what you do or the best that you can be. So it's cool. And he's an amazing writer. So. Yeah, cool. I like it. Yeah, All right, sure. my one for the week then, the more fun one, the stuff to just binge watch listen to whatever it is this week is i don't think i've mentioned it before the tv show once upon a time i've used that before no No. so it's dead cool i've been watching it basically non-stop and it's been out for a while i think there's like seven seasons Uh, but what it is is all of the sort of fairy tale characters or myths and legends things like that they're basically all part of this sort of other realm and Mm. then the real world is a different realm but there's one of basically the evil witch from snow white cast a curse that then curses them all to just live in the real world but they don't know who they were and there's a kid who's got this story book that tells all of their stories and he realizes that all of the people in this town are all the fairy tale characters and so it's about them trying to sort of work out what's gone on, how to fix it and get their old lives back and their memories back and stuff. And there's loads of different sort of twists and turns and like they're all connected to each other in different ways. And it's really cool, like the way they've sort of rethought the stories and the characters to to link them together in different ways. Uh, But yeah, it's really cool. 
if anyone wants to check that out. It's on Netflix. What so. kind of vibe is that? Is it like comedy? No, it's... I don't know. It's like... It's not really a comedy. It's sort of like a, just a lot of other sort of American... Sort of, it's not drama show, really. Do you know what I mean? It's like... If you think of your sort of superhero shows like The Flash or Arrow... Or, you know, if you watch things like The Vampire Diaries or Sabrina, things like that, it's just like one of them. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So it's cool. Check it yes. out. And that's it, isn't it? That's it, mate. Oh. Yeah. That's it. Cool. So, have you got anything else before we wrap things up? Uh, nope. Just obviously reiterating um, jump onto the nutri-iq.net site and sign yourself up to the newsletter if you're not on it already so you get all the updates um yeah and just uh, like i think as well like what you said before the feedback on the information that we're putting out um is very very welcome like if you see something that you like and um, obviously we encourage you to share it so that you can friends can see it and stuff but also to just drop us a comment, drop us a message and say that that resonated with you, it was helpful or, or it caught your eye because of the way that it was set out. Um, and then Sean can work with that. That's very, very helpful, obviously, just to bring the best information that we can to you guys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, if you're not on it already, head over to join our newsletter, which I'll put the link to in the description and the show notes for the show so that you can get all of our updates every week and be notified when every competition day opens throughout that first week of June to win yourself six months free on the smart plan. Uh, as well as that, if you want to get Dan's gratitude diary, his email address will be in there as well. So shoot him an email and grab that from him. If you could be amazing enough as to donate a little bit to the fundraiser, the link for that will be in the description as well. And then one last request, if you could, which we should have done before, but I only thought of it last week, is if you're listening as a podcast, uh, especially on iTunes, if you could leave a review of the show, let us know what you think. Uh, that massively helps out the show because iTunes sees that and thinks this is something that people will want to listen to and then recommends it to other people as well. So if you're listening on, I listening on iTunes, leave us a review over on there but apart from that thanks for tuning in to nutri iq radio this week and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the show if you are listening as a podcast subscribe to our youtube channel which is nutri iq tv if you're watching on there and if you want to follow us around social media you can like our facebook page and follow us on instagram which is at nutri iq without the dash so it's goodbye from me sean and goodbye from me jim see you all later Bye.